In this video, we'll determine the molecular geometry and electron geometry for XeO2F2. So to do this, we first need a valid Lewis structure. So this is the Lewis structure for XeO2F2. You'll note that all the atoms have an octet, except for the central xenon. That has more than eight, but that's okay. Xenon can have an expanded octet. So this is our Lewis structure. Once we have the Lewis structure, we can imagine all of these atoms here pushing away from each other and spreading out. And this lone pair, it occupies space and volume. It's going to push out against the atoms as well. So they'll all spread out. That's what's going to give us our molecular geometry for XeO2F2. Let's take a look at a visualization of that. So the purple, that's the central xenon atom. We'll add two oxygen atoms. They have the double bonds. There's one, two, and they spread out to be as far away from each other as they can be. Then we'll add two fluorines. They have single bonds. So at this point, we have this tetrahedral molecular geometry, but we need to add the lone pair. So when we add the lone pair in, we end up with what's called a seesaw molecular geometry. So here's our seesaw molecular geometry. Let's turn the lone pairs off, and you can see this is the seesaw molecular geometry. If we wanted to look at the electron geometry here, we'd take into account these electrons, this lone pair here. It's probably best to put it like this here, so you can visualize this trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry. So the electron geometry is trigonal pyramidal. The molecular geometry, that's the seesaw that we talked about. So let's go back to our Lewis structure here. There are two other ways we could figure out the molecular geometry for XeO2F2. The first is we could look at the steric groups bonded to the central xenon. We have one, two, three, four, and our lone pair five steric groups. Four of them are atoms, one that's the lone pair. Then we could look it up on a table and we said we had a steric number of five and we had just one lone pair. If we go over again, that's the seesaw molecular geometry. If we wanted to look at the bond angle, we would expect this would be 180 here right along this line. This would be 120 and then we would have 90 degrees for these here. Those are the ideal bond angles. The actual bond angles would be a little bit different. They're listed in the description for this video. We could also use what's called the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry. So A, that's our central xenon atom. X, that's the number of atoms attached. We have two oxygens and two fluorines, so four atoms attached. E, that's the number of lone pairs. We have one lone pair. Often you'll see one written, sometimes not. So that's AX4E, one. And if you look this up on a table or if you'd memorized it, that's the seesaw molecular geometry. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry, electron geometry, and bond angles for XeO2F2. Thanks for watching.